Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man with some information for those of you considering cutting the cord with an antenna. Let's say that you have an antenna set up and it picks up all of your local channels just fine. How do you connect it to all the TVs in your house? If you're a cord cutter or use an antenna, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. While I will try my best in this video to explain the ways you can connect an antenna to multiple TVs in your house, every situation is different. If you need help choosing the best antenna for your location, along with setup guidance on how to connect it to all the TVs in your house, I do offer setup guidance on my website, antennamanpa.com. So there are a few ways to connect one antenna to multiple TVs. The first option is to connect it directly to each TV by coax, and the second option is with a wireless tuner. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. With a direct coax connection, you will get the best picture quality and reliability, but depending on how your home is wired, it might be hard to run a coax cable from the antenna to where the main splitter and coax cables are located in your house. A wireless tuner is more convenient to set up, usually comes with a channel guide and DVR functionality, but the picture quality is slightly reduced for smooth playback over Wi-Fi. I'll first explain how to connect an antenna to multiple TVs by coax. A lot of you are probably thinking, just connect the antenna to the splitter in your house where all the main coax cables are located and it'll work. That's not exactly the answer. You see, without an amplifier, unpowered splitters like this typically result in signal loss that can make some channels less reliable. You can only use these if your antenna has a built-in amplifier, like most Televis antennas do. If you have a passive, unamplified antenna, you need some kind of amplifier if you're connecting it to multiple TVs. You can either connect a mass-mounted preamplifier near the antenna, followed by a passive splitter, or just use a powered splitter. The advantage of a mass-mounted preamplifier is that the signals get amplified right at the antenna. This typically results in better reception compared to a powered splitter, but the disadvantage is that if something goes wrong with the preamp down the road, you will need to go back up to the antenna to troubleshoot the issue or possibly replace it. Using a powered splitter to connect an antenna to multiple TVs is a bit more convenient since it can be placed in a location that's easy to access, like a basement or garage, in the event it needs to be checked or replaced down the road. I actually preferred this method back when I installed antennas locally. The only issue is that depending on how long the coax cable is from the antenna to the powered splitter and how weak the signals are, reception might be impacted a little bit. Most times it isn't an issue, but if signals are very weak, a mass-mounted preamplifier works best. Keep in mind that if your antenna already has a preamplifier built in, like most Televis antennas, you do not need an additional amplifier or powered splitter. Simply connect a splitter after the power inserter or a power passing splitter before the power inserter if there's no power access near the splitter. There will be more than enough gain coming from the preamplifier built into the antenna to prevent any signal loss you'd otherwise have with a non-amplified antenna. Links to recommended preamplifiers, powered splitters, and power passing splitters are in the description of the video. If you choose to connect the antenna to your TVs by using the existing coax cables in your home with either an amplifier or a powered splitter, make sure to keep the cable that runs to your home's internet modem connected as it is now. Otherwise, you'll lose internet service. If there's only one coax cable that runs inside your home from the outside, you will need to run a new cable inside where the coax cables are. Do not attempt to do this on your own if you are not handy. Hire a professional contractor. I do offer assistance in locating antenna installers on my website at antennamanpa.com. Besides direct connection by coax, another way to connect an antenna to multiple TVs is with a wireless tuner like an HD Home Run or a Tableau. These are relatively easy to set up compared to having to run a coax cable from the antenna to where the splitter and coax cables in your house are located. An additional benefit of a wireless tuner is a full channel guide and DVR functionality. While all this sounds great, there are a few things you should know. If the TVs in your house are not smart connected, you will need a streaming device like a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick 
to access local channels from the Tableau or the HD Home Run through their respected apps. Picture quality is also slightly reduced. Most of you probably won't notice a difference, but it might be noticeable to some on larger TVs or during programs with a lot of movement, like live sporting events. This diagram from Silicon Dust shows how a wireless tuner like the HD Home Run works. It connects directly to your home's internet service by Ethernet and is accessed by Wi-Fi on the devices in your home. If it's not feasible to run a coax cable to the HD Home Run near your modem, the Tableau is a better option since it works off Wi-Fi. You can find links to both in the description of the video. So those are the two ways to connect an antenna to multiple TVs. If it isn't too hard to run a coax cable from the antenna to where the main coax cables in your house are located, it's best to directly connect the antenna to each TV as you will get the best picture quality that way. If the way your house is set up makes it hard to run a coax cable to the central location where the coax cables and splitter are located, the wireless tuner approach is better. Just keep in mind that you will still need to run a coax cable from the antenna to a climate controlled area where the wireless tuner is located. Do not install a Tableau or HD Home Run outside or in the attic as neither is designed to handle extreme temperatures. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or as a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them while getting exclusive perks, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man, click the join button this video and you can also click the thanks button. Be sure to like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antennamanpa or sign up to my email list linked in the description. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.